It's a tribute to Futurama this week. Esther is going to recommend her favorite episode. I'll talk about alternative shows for Futurama fans who just need a little bit more. And we'll take a look at how a famous Futurama math problem is solved. All this and more on this episode of We Come From The Future. This episode of We Come From The Future is brought to you by Audible.com. Welcome to We Come From The Future, the show where we slip into the great shimmering pool of the future and pretend that we're not peeing in it. I'm Annalie Newitz. And I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. Good news, everyone. We're doing an episode that's all about Futurama. The animated show has gone through over six seasons, four movies, and two networks, so we figure it's earned at least a 10-minute look on this show. Esther is the die-hard fan between us, so if you're just starting out with the show, she's going to give us a couple hints on what to watch first. The best thing about Futurama is the fact that it can make me love everything that I hate, and that really shows in the two episodes that I recommend. I hate like political allegories where they take an issue and spin it out into a storyline, yeah. but I loved Decision 3012. It's a spoof about a young, charismatic presidential hopeful who is missing his Earth certificate. Ooh, Sounds happy handed, but it actually works. And the classic episode that I love, again, has everything I, that I hate. It has the men and women are different humor, which is bad. It has sexual assault humor, which is just wrong. And worst of all, it is disrespectful to the vocal stylings of William Shatner. And yet, everything about that episode is so funny that you just, it, it is really hard not to pee while watching. Wow. It's called Amazon Women in the Mood, and it's an episode about the crew getting stranded on an Amazon world where the gender politics are all flipped and they hit people with clubs unbelievably funny. And, and also it's a reference to Amazon Women on the Moon, which itself was a parody, which makes this episode a parody of a parody of It has so else. many layers, Annalise. It's wow. so many I, layers. I feel, yeah, I feel layered. I feel like a layer cake right now. But what if you don't care for the series, or you've watched everything seven times? Annalise is going to recommend some alternatives. All right, so when thinking of alternatives to Futurama, I basically just came up with some ideas for really good uh, science fiction comedy. So first I would recommend Lex, which is a Canadian comedy sci-fi show. It's about a group of criminals and weirdos who steal a ship that eats worlds, you know, just goes around chomping down an entire world, and these guys roam the galaxy getting into trouble. Uh, the characters include a sexy cluster lizard, so don't mess with her, uh, a lovelorn robot head who kind of zooms around on a skateboard, and he, the robot head is madly in love with an emo vampire alien who actually gives you anti-Edward humor before the Twilight series, so it's kind of like a time travel parody thing. Um, and of course, there's also a, a kind of semi-heroic janitor. Another show I would recommend is the UK show Misfits, which is actually getting an American version soon, so catch the, the UK show while you can before your brain is polluted by the American version. Um, this is a cool show about a group of teenagers who are on probation doing community service when a storm gives them superpowers. And it's not intended as a comedy primarily. Uh, it's a drama, but it's very funny, and a lot of the plot twists are very goofy, and the superpowers we see are things like an evil guy who can control milk, which doesn't sound very scary until you realize that a lot of our main characters eat pizza, so think about that. And finally, uh, just for fun, I would recommend Third Rock from the Sun. Uh, it's always good to unbury you know, a great 90s classic, you can see Joseph Gordon-Levitt before his career in Batman when he was just a teenager with an alien trapped in his body. Um, it's a good, fun show. You can sort of pick up with any episode and watch it in the background while you're doing other stuff on your computer. And these are basically my, I think, the best examples of some good science fiction comedy you might not have seen before. Yeah, and they're all great comedy picks. But while those shows talk about science and math, Futurama actually delivers the science and math. It's true. There's one Futurama episode where one of the writers actually developed a math theorem, Keeler's theorem, to back up the show's concept. And since we're focusing on Futurama, we got the director of the Bay Area Science Festival to come in and explain Keeler's theorem to us right now. I am here with Kishore Hari, who is the director of the Bay Area Science Festival, and he is going to help us do some very important Futurama math. 
So remember this problem next time you have a brain mix-up question. Um, so tell us what we're doing. What, where did this come from in Futurama, and what kind of math are we doing here? In season six, there's an episode called Prisoner of Benda, where the professor invents a machine to switch everyone's brains into a different body. Is it possible to get everyone back to normal using four or more bodies? I'm not sure. I'm afraid we need to use math. But of course it comes with a catch. And the catch is that you can't switch back into the body that you just switched from. Hmm. Okay, so, and this is a group theory uh, problem. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do is we have these fine volunteers here. Mm -hmm. um, and each of us has a body that's on the lanyard around our neck. And we each have a brain that you can see here. And you're gonna explain to us how it is that we're gonna switch all of our brains without going back into the original body and getting infected or whatever. All right, so this is very important math. Um, I'm gonna get into line mm -hmm. and uh, walk us through it. So this is what happens after all of the shenanigans. We see all of the Futurama people in, basically mixed up in two distinct loops. And those loops are, you see Fry and Zoidberg together in one loop. They just switch with each other. And then everyone else is basically in one giant circle where they all switched uh, across a number of different bodies. So what we're going to do is essentially use Fry and Zoidberg uh, as a solution to this proof. Actually, in the show, they use two Harlem Globetrotters, uh, <laughs> but we couldn't find any. So we're just going to use Fry and Zoidberg as a little bit more of an elegant solution to the proof. So I'm going to have Annalise start switching brains, okay. and she's going to switch with the wash bucket. All right. So now Zoidberg's brain is in Amy's body, uh, and then Annalise is going to keep going on down the line just switching brains every single step of the way. Now I'm in her. And you can see now she's the professor's body, Leela's brain and Fry's body, hallelujah. Yay! All right. On down the line. And now, and now I have my head back. Yeah, so Fry's back to normal and you can return back to your spot. But we still have Amy and Zoidberg's body and Zoidberg's brain and Amy's body, which is just disgusting. So that's their <laughs> final switch, is have those two come together and so do one more switch. So they've become the smaller loop, basically. Correct. So when you actually look at the group theory proof, it actually puts these into two distinct loops and uh, for, for an X and Y as being sort of the zippers, and they represent Fry and Zoidberg, you can solve this situation at any time. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed on this crucial piece of math. It just proves that Futurama is actually one of the best uh, informed science shows on TV at this point. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. Again, that writer is named Ken Keeler, and he created Keeler's Theorem to solve that particular brain mix-up dilemma. On that note, it's time to thank our sponsor. This episode of We Come From The Future is brought to you by Audible. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Choose from books in every genre, science fiction, thrillers, drama, comedy, business, history, and more. For example, I'm reading Zubiquity. It's a book about how animals get clinical depression, eating disorders, they get pretty much every disease, nervous or physical, that humans get. Of course, there's over 100,000 titles to choose from, so if you're more into fiction, you can go with that. With audiobooks from audible.com, reading is convenient and fun whether you're commuting to work or flying to the other side of the world. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash future to get a free audio download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, go to audiblepodcast.com slash future for your free audiobook. In Futurama, they go to the future and the past and they see civilization get destroyed. A lot. We posed the question on our website, would you want to survive the end of civilization? We got a lot of responses. I think the response that best mimics my thoughts is by Common Vices. And that person says, there are just way too many contingencies for that question to have an easy answer. Did the human race get raptured away? Or are there stacks of dead bodies everywhere? Is the infrastructure relatively intact? Or is America like a smoldering crater? Are there adversaries that we need to combat, or is our biggest problem learning how to grow corn and remove our own gallbladders? I think I would be happy to stick it out if I got to see something interesting like space invaders or fish people, but if all I'm doing is sitting on a rock waiting for them to invent precision eyeglasses technology again, no thank you. 
Yeah, no, I'm, I feel the same way. Like, I like the kind of excitement of like a cabin in the woods sort of scenario, but I want, I want to see civilization rise again, which is why I love this project that you can find online, which is called the Global Village Construction Set. And it's basically a bunch of geeks got together and created a collection of 50 simple designs for all the machines that you would need to restart civilization. And that's the way I want to roll after the apocalypse. And on that note, that's it for this week's We Come From The Future. Remember to subscribe to us on YouTube by clicking there. And you can find us on iTunes by searching for io9. And you can always find us here at Revision 3. I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. And I'm Annalie Newitz. We'll see you next week in the future.